Good morning. The February 15, 2022 meeting of the Charter Authorizing Panel is called to order. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Arkansas Department of Education Auditorium and ask that you please silence all electronic devices. Um, I want to welcome Ms. Toyce Newton back to the Charter Authorizing Panel. Ms. Newton, are you able to hear us? Let's check, make sure we can hear you. You're on mute. No, I can see your I can see you're talking, but we can't hear you. So maybe we can help you can work on that and we'll get back to it. Um, so we now have um, six members on our charter authorizing panel, myself, Deborah Kaufman. Uh, Dr. Sonia Wright McMurray, uh, Philip Baldwin, Dr. Eric Flowers, Ms. Toyce Newton, as I uh, introduced, and Carly Sarasuni, who will be joining us in a few moments. So we're expecting to have a fair and responsible hearing, and I request that each person speaking state your name and title for the record each time, and be sure to continue to speak clearly into the microphone for the um, benefit of the panel, the audience, and the viewing audience. This entire meeting is being live streamed and recorded. A transcript of the meeting is available, or will be available on the uh, DESE website. So with that, let's get directly into our agenda. Um, and channel uh, charter panel members, we have minutes from our January 18th meeting for your consideration. I move approval of the minutes. Okay. I have a motion from Dr. Wright McMurray to approve the minutes. Second. And a second from Mr. Baldwin. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Motion minutes are approved. Um, action agenda item number one. Same. Dr. Sutherland. Number one is the approval of an open enrollment charter application for 2022. Um, this is uh, Matthew Sutherland, coordinator of standards and system support, interim charter director. Uh, the, the application is actually been updated. There's only two pieces that have really changed. One is the addition of a community school option and the other is actually a list of waivers that they can choose from so that we don't get multiple names for the same waiver. Any questions or discussion? We need, a motion. we need a motion to approve the application. I'll move to approve the application as Second. I have a motion by Mr. Baldwin and a second by Dr. Wright McMurray to approve the open enrollment charter application for 2022. All those in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Application is approved. All right. Um, All right. Next number two. Uh, next item is actually the consideration of a renewal for Cross County Elementary's uh, DLP. So the digital learning plan has actually been reviewed internally by the DESE review team. Um, the amendment is being requested to extend the digital learning plan through the duration of the charter for Cross County Elementary Technology Academy. Do we have anyone with us from Cross County? Yes, Ms. Stacy is on the Zoom. Ms. Stacy? We're getting no sound. Technical difficulties, we're working on it. Hang on. We might check on your microphone. There's a little carrot right next to your, uh, your sound, your audio, just a little triangle. Make sure that it's the same as your computer.
All right, Miss Stacy, can we try again? Yes, can you hear me now? I can, thank you. Okay, good. So um, on the Cross County uh, Digital Learning Plan. Yes, ma'am. This is for the elementary only? Yes, ma'am. And so talk to us about your other buildings. Um, the other building, the high school, I believe theirs was approved for that three years. You know, we came in um, December and renewed our charter, but our digital learning plan was only for a year. And the feedback we got from the panel was that um, to bring this to that as an amendment to approve it for the length of the charter. Correct. So Matthew, when we finish, will you go back and double check on high school to see if they have a digital learning plan for high school okay. for the remainder of their charter? Any questions? Um, and so this digital learning plan has been reviewed by all of our internal team? Correct. Okay. Dr. Flowers, any questions? Yes. Um, I'm looking at what you're talking about, um, synchronous and asynchronous. So you're saying that um, under accentuating circumstances and at the direction of the participating districts, um, asynchronous will be available. So can you give me some examples of when students will be allowed this option? Mm -hmm. So um, it would be in the event of if they had technical difficulties and they were missing a, a lesson or something like that, that would be provided to them. Okay, thank you. They wouldn't miss out. Okay, thank you. Mr. Any other Dr. Flowers? That's it. Mr. Baldwin? No questions. Dr. Wright McMurray? I don't have any additional questions. Ms. Newton, do you have any questions? No. no. Ms. Stacy? Yes, ma'am. Um, how many students in the elementary um, took advantage of the digital learning option last this school year, I guess? We currently have two. Um, we had at um, one point up to four, but that changed again at semester. So we have two at the current moment. And the, what was the feedback from the parents and students that were utilizing the digital learning option? Um, the two that we have are, are ones that I think are, you know, pretty committed to that mode of education. So, um, you know, we still see them, them are I ready tests and all of that in our district. So we still have contact with them and they seem very pleased. And the students are progressing as expected? They are. They're doing well. They are. All right. No other questions? I'll accept a motion. Can you hear me now, Ms. Kaufman? I can. Thank you, Ms. Newton. Okay, great, great. I'll make a motion to approve the digital learning plan as second. Dr. Flores, did you second? Yes. Okay. I have a motion for Mr. Baldwin and a second from Dr. Flowers to approve the Cross County Elementary Technology Academy Digital Learning Plan. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Ms. Stacy, we'll follow up with you to make sure that we've got elementary and high school. Um, everything's done up to the ending of the charter. Thank you, I appreciate it. Dr. Sutherland, number three, please. All right, so we have consideration of Haas Hall Academy five-year renewal in addition of two amendments. So the, the charter is requesting five-year renewal of the charter with all existing waivers for Haas Hall Academy, Haas Hall at the Lane, Haas Hall Academy Jones Center, and Haas Hall Bentonville. The addition of a new site for grades 7, 12, and Fort Smith, and an increase in enrollment by 500 to accommodate the Fort Smith campus students. All right, good morning. Um, Ms. James, would you like to come up and go over the process, please? James with the department. So for this agenda item, um, each person who is speaking on behalf of the school will need to be sworn in by the chair. 
Um, the school will have 20 minutes for their presentation, and as far as I know, there is no opposition uh, to this request. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. All those speaking on behalf of Haas Hall, if you will stand and raise your right hand, please. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Dr. Schottmeyer, yes. good morning. Good morning. You have 20 minutes, and I believe you have a PowerPoint presentation. Yes, I yes, How are you? Good about yourself. Good, thank you. I'm Martin Schottmeyer. I'm the founder of Haas Hall Academy. We're a multiple national award-winning model of how a charter school can strengthen communities, inspire innovation, and be a catalyst for change in the, in the, excuse me, the renewal of expectations for public education. We were founded in 2004. We were in a converted dairy barn, <clears throat> had 16 students. We have a campus at Fayetteville. We have a campus in Bentonville. We have a campus in Rogers. And we have a campus in Springdale at the Jones Center. Haas Hall Academy has been recognized by the Department of Education as a reward school for seven consecutive years, top 5% in performance and top 5% in growth. Since our inception, we've held the highest accreditation status possible from the Department of Education and we're recognized as a success school. For a decade now, Hostel Academy has been recognized by US News and World Report as the number one public school and high school in Arkansas. And we're ranked in the top 10 for public schools and public charter schools in the nation according to US News and World Report. In 2018, 19, and 21, our, our brand of schools made history Based on the ACT Aspire exam scores in 17-18, we were numbers one, two, three, and four in the state. In 18 and 19, we were one, one, two, three in the state. And in 2021, we were one, two, three, four in the state. So what makes Hustle Academy different? Our curriculum is an accelerated college preparatory curriculum focused on STEAM. We're accredited by Advanced Ed and the Department of Education. And our scholars take four 90-minute blocks per day, five days a week. So they can take two years of something in one calendar year. So if I attend traditional school and I go 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, I can take six years of English. At Haas Hall Academy, I can take 12th. In one calendar year, our scholars are placed on cl in classes based upon academic ability, not by grade level, except for English. English is the only class that tells us what grade you're in. We have 100% graduation rate and 100% college acceptance rate. We have a faculty scholar-led tutoring program that's phenomenal. Our, my faculty give, give their time as well as other scholars give their time to help with uh, tutoring. So we have tutoring programs at all four campuses three days a week. Scholars must take the ACT or SAT every year and they must take the PSAT every year. And the reason we do that is because we want to make sure that they're ready when, to take the ACT when, they, when they're in 11th grade. As a microcosm of a university, Hostel Academy makes every effort to hire faculty with advanced degrees in their respective fields, not necessarily certified, but certainly highly qualified. I'm going to introduce Rebecca Lukert, my director of culture. Hello, I'm Rebecca Lukert, and I'm here as um, the director of culture. I've been at Hostel Academy for 16 years, and in that time period, I've served in the capacity as athletic director, social science chair, and something that's really important at Hostel Academy is our scholars and being from the Dairy Barn days to all our transitions and watching the school grow from 31 to our now 1300 has been an absolute joy to see 
the impact on our community um, in our four cities that we serve and also in our own school and the environment that we are seeing in these strides and changes. So one of the big things that we have done is we really tasked with um, the Equity Assistance um, Center here in Little Rock to work with us on implementing our diversity and equity plan. And so we've, you will see in the packet that we have put together seven goals that are measurable and that we have been going through together but the thing is, is they're continual. So once you have, it's not just checking boxes, it is making sure that we have a plan that we can go back to and have a framework that we can work within. As our students, diversity will change, the different inclusions that we have. And we've seen this not only with just our students, but also with our faculty as well. And so this has become um, a really awesome experience, especially during the time um, with COVID, because we've had to make a lot of changes and we've had to do big resources and one of the biggest things that I think has been really amazing that we did this year is when we are doing our synchronous learning we've always kept a virtual option for our scholars and that has proved to be extremely pivotal in the educational system where they're not missing days or if they do have family members that they need to be home with that they can still get a quality education simultaneously and that's been something that's really been a joy to watch this past year. Thank you. So this has been a difficult year for all schools, certainly with COVID. Uh, at Hostel Academy, we're, there's nothing different with us. I mean, we had, there's a lot of work and a lot of stress, but we did synchronous learning with our scholars. So everybody logged in and uh, worked together at the same time. We had proud, determined faculty to make sure that our scholars learned and our scholars were well prepared for the next year. We had eager scholars, those young men and women who want to learn every day and they want to be at Hustle Academy. And we have engaged parents, parents that want to make sure their, their scholar is learning something every day. It's been an especially hard year for me personally. I lost my mother last semester uh, during the COVID. She didn't get COVID, but uh, during the COVID crisis that we had. so. It's made an, an, an effect on me, certainly, this year, that uh, not having her. She was my headmaster in my Fable campus and also my department head of English. So she came to work with me every day and left with me every day. First one's there, last one's to leave every day. So that's, that's uh, my mom there. Here's our intended Fort Smith campus. It's the old Baxter Healthcare facility. We're going to have the third floor. There are 4,000 parking spaces. So there's enough parking, certainly, for us to be able to have scholars drive themselves or ride a bus. It's in partnership with the Arkansas College of Osteopathic Medicine. So what we want to do is we want to prepare young men and women to go into the field of medicine. Uh, we have a state-of-the-art facility there. I think it's going to be one of the crown jewels of our, of our state once it's up and running. Um, you want to go into here? Okay, this is Amelia Donovan. She's my executive director of special services for Hoss Hall Academy. Good morning, my name is Amelia Donovan. Um, I oversee all of our special services for Hoss Hall for all four campuses. Um, we currently have um, a special ed teacher at every one of our campuses. And then with the new, with the new um, building, I would want to do everything I can to support the new scholars, however they need. Um, like Dr. S was saying, with COVID, we did have synchronous learning, but we still made sure that our scholars were receiving their resource support, their speech services, um, reading interventions, math supports, um, all of those were incorporated in our synchronous learning as well. Um, so I wanna make sure my goal is to ensure that those scholars are receiving the same education and supported the same way um, with the services that they need to continue to grow. James, if you're ready for our legal review. <clears throat> My name is Whitney James with the department, 
And I apologize in advance, we have a lot to go over, but I'll try to make it as quick as possible without going too quickly. Um, on the, oh, yes, so, yes, that will be, we'll have to go through it because it was confusing the way it's in the application. Okay. It was, to me, at least. Yes, ma'am. We have a lot of, there's a lot of cleanup. Okay. But I'll try to make it. So, can I ask you a question before you get started? So, in this cleanup, I was thinking last night as I was reading back through this that we're probably going to need a clean waiver sheet to put on the state board review because I think if they read through the application and saw things repeated, Ed, I think it's just too confusing. Yeah. Okay, thank I you. Agree. We appreciate that. Good idea. We didn't know how to resubmit stuff after because you know this is our, we had to continue the last week. Right, right, COVID, right. So we wanted to have the materials in front of you. We can do it together. Happy to. Okay. wonderful to work with Thank you. Thank you. So happy. All right, Ms. James, get us started. Okay. So on the agenda, we have the final legal review. Like I said, there are a lot of things that we need to clean up. But just to start with the general legal concerns, um, you know, I've worked with Mr. Henry quite a bit on this, and we will go through the correct uh, waiver topics, statute names, and update the standards. Um, they're going to add Section 7 of the Rules Governing Educator Licensure to their teacher licensure request. Okay. So are we going down the legal review? I'm starting with the, G the general legal concerns okay. at the right. top, just to clarify that we've resolved all of those. Um, also, Haas Hall has reached out to our child nutrition unit and confirmed that their food services at the Rogers campus, which I believe is the only campus that um, uses child nutrition funding, they don't need to ask for any waivers if they're squared away on child nutrition. Um, and it's also my understanding that they are not using uh, child nutrition funding for any of the other campuses. Right. And that they do not, or they're not asking for any food services waivers for those remaining campuses. Correct. Right. Okay. That brings us to the first waiver request. Um, the uniform dates for beginning and end of school year. That's code section 610-106-A. And I have asked that Host Hall or Mr. Henry offer some additional rationale to that. Right. So we're not asking to have less time. We need more time in the day. So we're, the waiver is not to, uh, uh, to avoid having full days. Our waiver is needed to have longer and so in order to comply with the Carnegie unit, uh, the, Carnegie, the Carnegie unit approach that they use, and so um, that's the reason for that waiver, is to add, give us more flexibility to have longer and more days. Are you starting earlier than yes. August 22nd? Yes. So are you providing more than 178 days? If you do the math and you add up your number of hours per day, we have to start earlier to get our 120 hours of the Carnegie unit because if we do the compressed time frame of 90 minute classes, and so four of those a day, and then you gotta add that up and divide it. So that has to have a start about a week earlier than everybody else. So are you offering more days then? I don't think we are, no. I, start early, I hear you. But then you don't have to do more than we, we must. We must do some extra days. We must do 183. I believe he read the uh, statute to require starting on a certain day. Yes. He tries to start early. Right. The statute. The statute is to start on um, this year. It would start August 22nd. Yes. And. I mean, if there if there was a rationale for why, you know, if you're going more than 178 days, or 
you know, you have some other reason. Otherwise, you know, we would expect schools to start on August 22nd unless there was some other, if you're following an alternate calendar or, um, or a 12-month calendar, not an alternate calendar, uh, a 12-month calendar, then, you know, that would make sense too. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Okay. So I think it's fair to say we probably go 183 days. Okay. So, and that will be reflected in your school calendar? It should be, yes. Okay. I know we go longer than everybody else. That's all I can tell you. I mean, our graduation is later than everybody else's. Except you have a lot of days. I haven't looked at your calendar from last year, but previously you had a lot of days that you were closed. College in. visit days? Yes. Yes. That's the purpose of those days. Okay. Now it's making more sense. Okay. I apologize. <laughs> so on those college visit days, you don't consider those instructional days? They're not instructional days, no ma'am. That makes more sense. Thank you. Thank you. On the second waiver request, uh, we're going to retitle that teacher licensure. Uh, we're going to remove that first part that says subchapter 10. That's not the correct way to cite, uh, to cite that code section. Um, and it's my understanding, and please confirm this, Mr. Henry, that the school is going to remove the ETSEC there and just ask for a waiver of 615. 1004. There are some statutes following that that we can't waive. Right. <laughs> so we Absolutely. just want to remove that set. Right. So the rationale there is that House Hall's had a, a waiver of the teacher's certification requirement since its inception. And we're not trying to add more to that. We're just trying to renew. And it is a correct to say that we are looking for the standard waiver, of, not standard, the waiver that we had previously at 615-1004. And then on number three, we're just going to remove uh, the language subchapter two personnel policies, leave the statute there. I didn't have any legal concerns regarding that. Um, same thing on number four. Yes, so on number three, that was personnel policy committee. Is that what we're waiving? Isn't yes. it? Okay. Yes, ma'am. It just, it, the citation was right. incorrect. We're just doing some cleanup on that. That makes sense. Um, on number four, more cleanup, we're going to remove the language subchapter three general provisions and remove the uh, section seven of the rules that's repetitive. We've got that cited in a previous waiver request. Um, on number five, teacher's license requirement, no legal concerns regarding that. No legal concerns regarding number six, Arkansas history requirement. Okay, let's discuss. Yes, ma'am. So in this particular case, it's 6, 17, 4, 18. I just want to make sure I know what we're saying. I believe they're asking for the waiver of the licensure requirement. However, they still plan to offer Arkansas history. Okay. That is correct. Okay. We definitely teach Arkansas history. That's not what we're trying to weigh. It's okay. only the uh, licensed certified teacher aspect of that component that flag that section necessitated that way. And, and does the teacher that's teaching Arkansas history, do they take advantage of the Arkansas history professional development that's available? the social science chair and very much so okay uh, yes as an eighth generation Arkansas educator it's extremely important thank you yes thank you All right, moving on to waiver number seven I did not have any legal concerns regarding that waiver request uh, and regarding waivers eight and nine it's my understanding that the school wishes to um, strike those because the code sections have been repealed. Right. So we're going to cross those off the list. And that brings me to number 10. I did not have any concerns regarding that waiver request. 
not have any legal concerns regarding waiver request number 11. And then on waiver request number 12, the written student discipline policies, um, the school is asking to narrow that request down some, which may alleviate some concerns to subsection B2 and A1, little c, little i. And that's also going to be included in the waiver request number 51. Okay, so B2, B2 only is what I, my notes reflect. Yes. And then... So this is the only the section that describes teacher? The requirement of teacher certification relative. We do have, of course, written policies regarding... It's in your handbook. It is, absolutely. Yes. And then, let me know if I'm moving too quickly. I'm going to slow down. On number 13, School Discipline Act, that statute has been repealed, so we're going to cross that off the list. Um, the school wishes to rescind number 14. Is that confirmed? Yes, I, my apologies. I, she looked like she was on a roll. I would agree with everything she said, of course. <laughs> if you don't confirm, I'll we, ask you at the end okay. as well. Yes, we've worked through all of these issues. The, Dean uh -huh. is telling you to move closer to the microphone. Well, I want to be respectful for sure. Um, Thank you. Yeah. So the recording catches you. Perfect. So yes, affirmed. <laughs> okay. I'm going to strike number 14. On number 15, I have no legal concerns regarding that waiver request. The school wishes to strike number 16. The whole thing. The whole thing, correct? The teacher evaluations? Yes, we certainly do provide those. So we don't need that waiver any longer. We do provide those. We don't need the waiver any longer. And that brings us to request number Does 17. Does that question about tests? They're useful. Okay. And that's why. Okay. Great. Yes, ma'am. They are rescinding that request. Yes. But they're using, but they're using the, using tests. We are. Okay. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Good. And have been. For, yes. yes. Good. Okay. On number 17, gifted and talented services, they wish to add a couple of code sections here to fully effectuate that waiver. Uh, they wish to add code section 622208C6 and 642109. And also the rules governing gifted and talented program approval standards. And for the record, your rationale? Great. Yes. And and Dr. Schottmeyer can also expand on this if you'd like. It says our rationality is that our rationale is that teaching staff is already uh, teaching based on ability rather than grade level. And so as those students who would otherwise be flagged for GT at younger ages, they're able to take advantage of the curriculum that does meet their needs in an accelerated format. Thank you. On number 18, I did not have any legal concerns regarding that request. We do. Um, so, Dr. Rupp McMurray, the 1A127 is a waiver of career and technical education for grades five through eight and standard 1A139 is the career and technical nine units of sequence to career and technical education courses representing three occupational areas. Do you have any concerns about that waiver? I do have, con I have concerns. I have some concerns on the rationale. And so I would like a little bit more explanation on the differentiation between students that are college preparatory and then the rationale that pursuing CTE courses does not align with that mission. Well, the reason that we do the college, we do college prep 
institution, right? And so it's accelerated. The goal here is instead of taking the career and technical courses the scholar would take, advanced classes in their respective field they're going to major in college. So technically it is, they're preparing themselves for the next job, which is going to be college. So they take advanced maths, they can take advanced chemistries, they can take advanced biologies, those additional courses that go beyond what's required by the state. That's why we do that. So in, in CTE, we do have over a, a 90% placement rate in post-secondary. So um, just the rationale that the inclusion of CTE courses in your college preparatory curriculum would prevent students from having those opportunities, this is what I have some of the issue with the wording on there. And then also, um, there are various opportunities through CTE courses to meet some of the needs that you've just expressed. And of course, a lot of what we do in CTE does prepare students for their careers leading into post-secondary and beyond. So I just think that there's some opportunities there that are being missed. Okay. And so that's just some of the concerns I have with especially the wording of the, the rationale. Yes, ma'am. So I could understand that maybe um, because they do offer advanced classes, advanced placement classes, that maybe there was more embedding of the work. If that could be to give that more, um, I don't know what the word I'm looking for, the more opportunity to for the hands-on to go along with what you're learning, which I would assume that they would do in most of their advanced placement classes, but. The question I had is, how does a student meet their 22 graduation requirements because they're required to get six CTE credits? So what are they, what are they doing for that? We have a waiver from that, don't we? I think you're referencing the career focus courses, and so what types of career focus courses are being offered at? Journalism. Uh, I can't remember any of the other ones off the top of my head. You know so in a lot of our CTE courses, we have engineering, programming, we have uh, chemistry of foods, we have a couple food science classes, we've had life science classes for early childhood development have been courses offered, medical terminology have been courses offered that currently right now, this year. So we do have CTE courses to help prepare um, our scholars in that direction. So are your students required to take six credits of CTE or content electives? Yes. And they meet that requirement they for graduation? They meet that requirement because okay. we, have, we have several course offerings in that regards. And I think that's why they have to put the, you have the areas listed here in your waiver of the courses that are offered. So that's why I was, I know that they're off of there. Right. I was just getting hung up on the, the wording of the. The wording of the waiver? Yes, yes. Of the waiver. Okay. And yes. I would just let you know that um, if our family consumer sciences teachers saw you call it home economics, they would have a fit. So. Oh, I didn't call it that, right? Yeah, it's home economics education. Oh. It's now called family and consumer science. Okay. Yep. Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll come back and revisit that one a little bit more probably. All valid points and it, it, if, if they are receiving the instruction, it certainly begs the question of whether or not the waiver is needed. I, mean, I hear that loud and clear. Yeah, I think we'll just, we'll go on and get the rest of them and come back and we'll circle back on that one. On number 19, length of director's terms. I did not have any legal concerns regarding that request. However, the school has asked to add some additional code sections regarding board of directors. I will go over those. And I will ask the school to provide some additional rationale for those since those were added um, a little bit later. The additional code sections that they wish to add are 613612C. 
613, 613, 613, 615, 613, 621, and 613, 631. Here's the names of the code sections. <coughs> I had identified uh, 616, 634 as well. Okay. Um, I want to give you a moment to, uh, according to my notes. Um, we already had that listed in a got different, it. different okay. spot. That explains it then. So the rationale is that the Haas Hall School Board from the inception has been comprised of interested people in the community. So these code sections relate to public election for a normal public school board with a, a zoning situation there. This waiver is merely a continuation of what we've been doing. We have uh, board members, we are, they've long, a lot of them serve for a long time, and the minutes are reflected, and um, we've actually updated our board, of, uh, our minutes on the website to reflect additional years in the past. We understood the law to require each year to be up, and we have since posted previous years as well. So that's state required information. And my apologies, these were left out on the original application. Mr. Henry, will you, if um, the Fayetteville site is approved, will you expand your board to include a board member from that geographical area? Okay, so I believe you misspoke. You said Fayetteville, the Fort Smith site. Fort Smith. Totally understand, and I wanted to be accurate. Sure. Um, Dr. Schottmeyer, would you address that, please? The question was. So, on your board, are yes. you are you representing the geographical areas? So, if you add in another campus, are you going to add another member to your board to represent from that Fort area? Smith, yes. And waiver request 20, 21, 22, and 23 are also related to the board of directors. I didn't have any legal concerns regarding those requests. Waiver request number 24, definition of a teacher. I did not have any legal concerns regarding that request. Number 25, we're going to strike that because it's duplicative. On number 26, it's code section 617309. No legal concerns on that. The school wishes to rescind waiver requests 27 and 28. They no longer need those waivers. Confirmed. On number 29, curriculum and instruction. The school is asking for a waiver of the required 38, and I've asked them to provide some additional rationale. So, as the, the rationale stated in preparation for today's hearing, is the waiver from the required 38 units, uh, which includes technical instruction, as we've talked about, uh, already have it from, we already have had this waiver from the beginning of the school. Um, and then Dr. Schottmeyer has justified that the AP courses are the type of courses that allow college-bound scholars to accelerate in their choosing direction, which is college. And if Dr. Schottmeyer would like to expand on that. I mean, we offer an enormous amount of AP classes for the size of the school that we have and give a number of budget tests. And so if a child wants to take AP biology instead of biology, we would like to be able to count that. Do you want to just kind of sum them all up together at the end? Okay. All right, number 30. All right, number 30. 
number 30, we're going to strike that because it's duplicative. On number 31, uh, we're going to correct that standard to read 2D1. That's the correct standard. That's what they're looking for. I didn't have any legal concerns regarding that change. On number 32, the school wishes to rescind this waiver. They no longer need it. Can we back up on number 31? On 2D1, um, so you're utilizing other library services, not just in the, in the schools. Is that the rationale? That's exactly the rationale, right. Okay. The Fayetteville Public Library, um, there's lots of libraries in the region as well. We just don't have the size or the resources to uh, have a full-time librarian and a library. And of course, with the digitization of the environment, you know, the physical location is certainly becoming less and less. Right, but you, and you provide lots of access to digital resources for students. Absolutely. Number 32, the school wishes to rescind that waiver request. They no longer need it. Um, number 33, we'll strike that. It was duplicative. On um, number 34, the transportation waiver. We're going to cross out food services because this is really regarding transportation. And add code section 619-101 at SEC. Number, oh, yes, so um, this is always a sticky wicket right here about safety. So by striking um, 6A2 or by waiving 6A2, that means what? What what does that mean that you you're not providing safety policies and procedures? regarding like buses correct the transportation component of it okay that was the intention is to identify the issues surrounding the, the fact that we do not have buses that make routes but instead for that's, those scholars who need it we provide bus passes right but that's not the standard okay. the 6a2 and I'm each, happy to revisit that. Each public school district will adopt and implement school safety policies and procedures in accordance with the laws of the state of Arkansas and the rules of the division. Well, we certainly have those, so I would that certainly And do you, it. and in um, Abscan, do you report your fire drills and tornado drills? And yes, ma'am. Do you have a continuity of operations plan? So, I mean, you you kind of do because you have um, a ready for learning plan probably, but right. a full continuity of operations plan is, you know, like if this building were destroyed by fire or tornado, what would you do to pick up services and move quickly, okay. pivot? So if you don't have a continuity of operations plan, you might want to get one they're we'll, required. We'll one. Yes, yes, yes. So are we removing 6A2? Yes, okay. we're deleting that. 682. Waiver request number 35. The school wishes to rescind this. I think that was actually an old, may have been an old citation. Either way, they wish to rescind it. Number 36 is duplicative, so we'll strike through that. Number 37, qualifications of directors. I believe we might have already gone over that, but I did not have any legal concerns regarding the waiver of that code section. Number 38, school district board of directors size, did not have any legal concerns. Number 39 is duplicative, we'll strike that. Same for number 40. On number 41, the school wishes to rescind this request because they are offering Arkansas history as previously discussed. On number 42, the school wishes to rescind the request for a waiver of instructional day, which is 
102, if they wish to continue um, with their waiver of 610-126, so that they will have four days if they can delay or release early. Okay, hang on, I gotta flip to that one. 16126. So, talk us through what is the school day? What's your belt schedule, school day? Um, classes start at 7.55. Um, the next block starts at 9.30. And then ends. Oh, I'm sorry, 2.30. 2.30. So you have a six hour instructional day? Yes. Okay. And are you on site now? I'm sorry? Are all buildings on site, on site instruction this year? Yes. Okay. Okay. On number 43, the school wishes to remove the code section that I have in red there, 62319-4B. Uh, that's actually been repealed. On number 44, uh, I believe we're going to strike that as duplicative. Yes, On number 45, the school is going to narrow their waiver request down to 617301A. Is that correct? I have A and B. No, nope. okay. it yes, says do a. not want subsection C. Okay, you're right, A and B, thank you. That's why you're here. <laughs> On number 46, we'll remove code section 617-2403. Um, that's duplicative. Right, I say all of 46 is duplicate, right? You see that? Well, I see what you have. Your notes are correct. Right. It's it's just clean up. We're going to remove 617-2403 because that would actually be included in 617-2401. Um, on 47, that code section has actually been repealed, so we're going to strike that waiver request. That's actually 47 and 47 and 48. We're going to strike. It's the same thing. On number 49, credit for college courses. I did not have any legal concerns regarding that waiver request. Let me read it real quick. So what does that do if we waive that? Right. Now this is really a finer point here. We offer instruction from 7th, right, through 12th. As we read this, it only permits college credit to be given to scholars who have completed the 8th grade, right? So that narrows our window to exclude 8th graders who could test and actually take these courses and receive credit for them in 8th grade. So. It is a real fine reading of the statute that said a public school student who is enrolled in public school in Arkansas and who has successfully completed the eighth grade shall be eligible to enroll in publicly supported community college or four-year programs, right? So there's a lot of eighth grade students who we'd like to provide instruction to that would then receive college credit for these AP courses. It's a real nuance, sorry. We're not waiving the ability to provide this. Instead, we're trying to expand the window of opportunity for the children who are otherwise prohibited under the statute. That's the part that's kind of, kind of scary because if we said we waived that altogether, does that waive your right to give college credit to the eighth graders? 
Well, that was certainly not the intention. Right. Right. Perhaps we could add a note regarding uh, why they're asking for this waiver request and grant the waiver with the understanding that it is not to, um, to keep the school from offering the credit for college courses, but rather to expand um, to allow them to offer college credit to younger or students in grades, um, students that have not completed the eighth grade. Did I fairly summarize that? Yes, sir. Yeah, I think we need to have a special note on that because right. otherwise I It's almost a permission to offer the, school, the, the these courses to eighth right. graders rather than throwing the whole. Usually, when you get a waiver from sure. something, it you're, means you're not going to do it. I, well, but it's a shall, right? right. And so, it, when we interpret that language to be exclusionary, yeah. that limits our opportunity as we've read right. it. And I'm not, of course, I'm not the definitive guide on how to interpret the statute, but. That's why we got a lot of attorneys around. All right, we'll come back and look at that one too. We may have to get some more. I was trying to find Matthew where it talks about eighth graders in in our procedures for doing that. So I've got to think through that a little bit. All right, all right. Number fifty, please. Yes, ma'am. On number fifty, the school wishes to add subsection A. That's really the only subsection that they would need for this waiver request. on number 51 okay that's the one we just talked about yep. okay okay <laughs> that's making a little bit more this sense. is a whole lot of waivers i'm sorry <laughs> yes on number 51 i have some code sections and standards and rules to add so i'm sorry please be patient with me Okay. The school wishes to add 618503A1C little i. We went over that a little bit before, but again, they also wish to add 6151005B5, 648102, 648103. The standard for ALE, which is 2I.1, and the rules governing student special needs funding, section 4. Excuse me. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm trying to. Which waiver are we on now? We're on number 51. 51, okay. 51 and 52 seem to be. We are striking 52 as a duplicate, right. so considering only 51. So. What I think we're saying is Haas Hall is not going to offer an alternative learning environment. Is that correct? That's precisely okay. what it is. And the rationale, as stated from the client, is we have 100% graduation and 100% college acceptance rate. Although we do provide 504 and IEPs, and you were introduced to Ms. Donovan earlier about and she's happy to answer any of your questions about the extent of assistance that we provide for these scholars. Uh, we've not experienced a need to have a separate alternative learning environment established formally. Is the rationale, and he's certainly here, or Ms. Donovan can answer any questions. Put it all together. Number 53, the school wishes to rescind that waiver request. And then oh. on number. Oh. So we're taking that one off. I'm sorry, which one? 50. Number 53. I have 53 is not. So that doesn't make any sense to me. 
so I'm not sure what we're saying, so I'm not sure if it's well, making any sense or not. We're at 53. Right? Are we on 53? Yes. On okay. 53. So I think we're in agreement. Oh. I don't know why you would want a waiver of that. That's no. what you're trying to do. No. I think her notes are correct. It does say rescind, and so I, I'll stand on that. Okay. okay. We're rescinding. We are. Okay. That makes more sense. It does. And number 54, they've already asked for a waiver of that standard, so that's duplicative. Right, but it's actually, Got it. actually duplicative. Thank you. On number 55, the school wishes to add standards 4F1 and 4F2. On 56, that is duplicative, so we'll strike that. On 57, I believe that we agreed to change the topic to superintendent licensure, is that correct? Yes. Okay, or administrative licensure. On 58, there are- Whoa, whoa, whoa. stop. On 57, we, you're requesting 4B1, which is a full-time superintendent because you have a director, and would you not need a waiver of 4B2 for superintendent licensure? Well, the code section that we cited is 617.427, which is a waiver of the superintendent licensure. Right, but the standard is 4B2. Okay, I see the 4B1 as discussed earlier um, and then it makes sense to put 4b2 as well since that was the mm -hmm. purpose of to, to have parity with the statute and then on 4c2 I see that you're requesting a waiver of the principal licensure but you do have a principal in each building absolutely okay and then 4d1 is the teacher licensure yes okay Thank you. I think the reason I had suggested changing that waiver topic is because I believe that some of these have already been cited before, but we can make it administrative. Right. We just don't want it to be standard for all human capital. Right. Yes. That's the part we're striking out, correct? Correct. Affirm. Yes. Okay. Because at one point it becomes disadvantage disadvantages you if you strike the whole thing. On number 58, there are some code sections and standards to add to this. We're going to add 618-200-2A, 618-2003-A2-A, and standards 4E1 and 4E2. Those are regarding the counselor. Okay, so can you come back and repeat those again? Or what are we doing with standard 2C? 2C, they're, let's see. The comprehensive school counseling plan. We have that. We have a, a counselor as well. And the only issue we have with, that necessitates or the rationale supporting this waiver is that um, we're asking for a waiver of the licensure of those people through the state. Instead, we use professionally licensed counselors with their own professional standards. Of, which is? Which is my understanding of 4E1, 4E1 and 4E2, yes. So are we striking standard 2C? I do not see that listed, no. Do you see that listed on yours? I asked if you wanted a waiver of 2C1. Can I see that? I'm going to look at that real quick so that yes. I can give you an informed decision. My apologies. Now you know how hard it was for us to read through this and make sense. <laughs>
have that meeting. Have that counseling okay. plan. So we're rescinding the 2C we're section. Rescinding 2C. Okay. Yes. Adding the code sections and 4E1 and 4E2. Affirm. Okay. Yes. I'm sorry, Whitney. I didn't understand what you said. Um, adding what? Add the two code sections, the 618-200-22A, 618-2003-A2A, and standards 4E1 and 4E2. We're moving 2C. Hang on. And I think they already have asked for 2D1, so that may actually be duplicative. And then we did go over the additional board of director citations and Hoss Hall has confirmed with me that they are asking for all of these same waivers for their Fort Smith campus, which I don't have any legal concerns with that as long as we resolve anything outstanding today. Okay. So with the renewal, the waivers discussed here would apply to all the renewals plus Fort Smith if it's approved? Yes ma'am. Okay. Yes ma'am. They've confirmed they don't want any additional special waivers for Fort Smith. Okay. All right. Let's talk a little bit about the amendment. Tell you're wanting to add a campus and Talk a little bit about talk a little bit about um, the cap, adding the campus. Um, so historically, you do your lottery in February if it's needed. That's correct. So that time's kind of passed. What are you going to do? Kind of talk us through that. Well, I don't want to open the the Fort Smith campus until 2023-24. I want to increase my enrollment cap 500 because all of our campuses, that's the goal is to have 500 scholars in each campus. So in that building that you showed us in the presentation, um, is are there other tenants in the building? There will be, yes. But researchers, it's going to be all medical stuff. So researchers and those types of things that our kids will be able to work with. So talk about the safety issues that how you're going to address those because typically um, in a school district there are background checks on every person that's coming in contact with students and you're going to be in a building so with other people so kind of talk us through how you're going to ensure the safety of the students well we're going to hire security that'll be our first thing uh, we'll also make sure that everybody's been vetted I suspect to work at the at the opacity Altheopastic uh, medical school, you've got to be vetted, I would think. If not, we'll make sure that the ones that interact with our scholars will be. Um, Why don't you describe as a prompt how it is that your scholars work with the Jones Center in Springdale, which is, as you know, a, a very public facility for a swimming pool and all these things. And tell about the security procedures that you have already. Well, we've got everything locked down, so you have to have a key fob to get inside the facility. Uh, same thing would be at the new at the Fort Smith facility, be all key fobbed entrance. Uh, we have a security guard. We um, have video cameras everywhere. So we're we take security very seriously. Have you had any instances at Springdale that no, caused concern? No, sir. No, sir. No, I haven't had any instances in any campus. And I bet this, I bet the board would like for you to, I mean, what it, tell how they, how you were approached. Is this an empty building? Is this a partially filled building? It's an empty building. Okay. It's going to be filled with us on the third floor. Um, it was an opportunity for myself and Kyle Parker to get together, the director, the guy in charge of the osteopathic medicine school. Um, to try to create a high school that would hopefully gear young men and women into the medical fields. 
And so not necessarily go to their school, but they could go to any other type of medical school that they wanted to. But the hope would be that they would be able to do some research, get to see some some things that high schoolers don't get to, to get to see because of the we don't have the, the the cadavers, we don't have a lot of the other things that they have that we can work on. Um, that'll make our school that much better. Talk to us a little bit about your relationship with the uh, traditional public schools in that area. Uh, I've spoken with the superintendent. Uh, he had no complaints about us trying to go to Fort Smith. Uh, my hope is that if I am approved, I'll go down there and start making a relationship with him. All right, let's start with questions. Dr. Flowers, would you like to begin? Okay. Ms. Lipker. Dr. Flowers, can you repeat your question? Yes. Hello. Thank you both. My question is um, geared toward your um, diversity and equity report for fall 2021. I know that this is a newly formed committee. So what I want you to talk to me about is I noticed that with your goals and objectives, you have 17 objectives that are marked as priority. So can you speak briefly about how you plan to kind of organize and tackle those? Yes, so we meet monthly, okay. and then sometimes we meet even more frequently, especially as different things arise or different circumstances. But we have standing meetings, and then um, we, we usually go back and see if we're back checking, like making sure we're going back to our framework that we have created. Sure. And we'll do checks within our committee, and then we'll also include other faculty members and even scholars in part of the process okay. and so it's just the three of you all that are part of this committee um it, we're currently expanding um and we've like teachers and different scholars have volunteered to be part of it it just hasn't been formalized in the updated okay. report do you have any idea of maybe the demographics of your committee and those interested in being a part of it yes um so through our various different campus well, our different campuses wide um especially with our Latinx faculty, our Asian faculty, um, and our black faculty that we, and staff, because definitely staff needs to be a part of this committee and our scholars, um, making sure that every that we are represented, because um, if you look at like our numbers, especially in um, Asian population um, and Latinx, we have a diversity even within that area between yes. Southeast and Southeast, like, sure. and making sure that we are um, accommodating in each of those. Thank you. Mr. Baldwin. Yes, thank you. And I, I want to say before I ask my question, uh, thank Dr. Schottmeyer for hosting me on a tour of all the campuses up in Northwest Arkansas. We spent an entire day doing that. And he personally, along with his senior team, uh, rode with me. I rode in his car, he drove. And we got to see not only all the buildings, uh, but a lot of teachers and a lot of students. And my favorite part was the students and a very impressive program. So I just wanted to thank you very much. Thank you for that. Um, thanking through your Fort Smith expansion, I was looking for, and I, I may have missed it, it's probably in here, a, a financial budget. I have one. You all. I, I printed off copies. Is that okay to mm -hmm. hand those up today? Thank you. Maybe just walk us through this because I bet you'll answer my question. Yeah. Sure, uh, State Foundation Aid, we hope to have 350 scholars our first year, kind of build up our senior class as far as doing seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and then adding the seniors the next year. Um, our salaries are about $925,000. Some technology that we'll buy. We're also getting a million dollars with the technology from the osteopathic medical school. So that's something that we're not gonna have to pay for a lot of the, the wiring and things like that. Um, 
some general supplies, textbooks. We use a lot of digital textbooks now. Classroom equipment, that's a high expense. Legal services, water, sewer. The lease is 360000 so it's $30,000 a month for 60,000 square feet. And so when you take the, the revenue minus the expenditures, you're looking at about an $800,000 uh, book in the, in the black at the end of the year. And that's in year one? Yes, sir. That's in year one. How, how long is your lease? What, what is your lease term? Our lease will be for three years until well, to the length of the renewal. So if I only go to five years and I start open up 2023-24, it'd be for three years. Okay. And you feel pretty good about the 350 students? Yes, sir. I certainly do. There's a lot of interest. Ms. Saraceni. Dr. Wright McMurray. Thank you again for your presentation and walking us through. It was helpful to have you guys walk through and explain through some of the waivers because I will say some of it wasn't as clear um, when we first read it, but now getting the walkthrough was very helpful. Um, I did already share my comments before about your wording on this CTE section. Um, just looking at the waiver initially when you listed the courses I understood because I was able to kind of do that follow before coming in but it's almost like you were asking to not have those courses initially um, and but then my other question I did have about ALE and this just for my information um, when you have students that come on your campus and if it's discovered that they would learn better in an ALE environment what happens to those students are they because it's not available there, are they no longer welcome to on the campus, or are they, how are they supported? It's or, never or, happened. It's never happened. So no, no one's ever needed to be in an alternative learning no. environment. We've had kids that have come from ALEs to our campus and done well, but not the other way around. Newton, do you have questions? Uh, no, I don't have any specifics. Well, I do have just, uh, and it's not a, a question that maybe we can get an answer to, but how do you plan the next phase uh, in terms of movement? I know that I remember the beginnings of Haas Hall and, and the, the humble beginnings, and how do you know that you're ready for the next phase? You know, do you go through a list of things that, uh, goals and objectives, or how do you approach expansion? Because I'm sure there's some folks that are, um, are interested in having the, that, the concept of, of a charter like Haas in their communities? Well, there has to be some interest in the community for us to be there. And, uh, and one of the things when you get interested, community members are the ones that help you sell it. And um, we're, we've had Bentonville open for, ooh, I'm going to say 10 years, uh, Springdale and Rogers for three apiece. So I think we're ready to expand one more time. And certainly Fort Smith is a, a town that we're excited about being able to be a part of and having the partnership. The real big thing with us is having the partnership with the medical school. That's the big one. If I didn't have that, I don't think I'd be going to Fort Smith. We're trying to go. Thank you, Ms. Newton. Um, so I have a cleanup sheet. Just hey. want to kind of run through. So um, you, I did hear you say that the board minutes had been posted for yeah. previous years. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yes, ma'am. Um, just quickly on background checks, um, who is responsible in your district for checking the SFA tool for any outdated background checks? Um, Susan Bendur. Okay. So we have some that are hanging that are have been on there too long. I'm sorry? We have some background checks in SFA. SFA? 
in the standards for accreditation tool okay. that have not been checked, verified, finished off, cleaned up. Okay. So just we'll bringing, that. bringing that to your attention. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for doing that. So in the SFA tool, if someone is um, up for renewal of license or you newly hired them, they should flag. Right. And, and what that does, that lets you know how long they've been in process and is that time reasonable. And the reasonable time for background checks is currently? The background checks that FBI and state police are within 48 to 72 hours, mm -hmm. but the child maltreatment can take up to 10 days. Okay. So, but we're trying to expedite that. We're working on that. And so usually within 10 days, 10 to 15, they should be cleared. So if you see someone that's hanging on for a month, and in that SFA tool, it tells you the day it flagged originally, yes, and then the current date, uh -huh. so you can see how long they've been hanging there. Yes. And if they've been hanging longer than a month, you need to contact Ms. Saracini's okay. office and get that resolved. We'll take care of that. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. Um, Sometimes things come up and the uh, candidate will have moved, and so they may have gotten a letter sent to their old address. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes it's just clerical, very easy to clear up. So please call. Okay, thank you. From our side, we can't tell what it is. So we just know it's not cleared. Okay. And so you should be aware of that and, and take care of it quickly. Um, so I believe in your high school, you do student success plans, but I think you call them something different. No, they're called student success They are? Yes. Okay. I didn't, I was looking for that word in your application. Everybody. They meet one-on-one -on -one with every scholar. And, and you have a written student success plan? Oh, yes. Okay. Um, and we mentioned briefly a while ago about the lottery. So in your uh, campuses, are all of them full to capacity and you no. offer a lottery? No, ma'am. The, there are more seats available. The, the problem is we're, we're heavier on your seventh and eighth graders. So there are more seats available for older scholars. It's not that dra dramatic, but there may be five or six extra seats. Or an older scholar. So you you haven't reached your cap in any of the buildings for We're to close. need a lottery. No, but we have not. But we, do, we have to do lottery anyway. Okay. Um, so in your application, I do not see an application for a digital learning plan, and your digital learning plan is set to expire at the end of this school year. I know. So what your tell us what your plan is. So I guess come back. Okay. And how many, I mean, I know we've had pivots and things like that, but how many are truly um, enrolled in a semester or year long digital learning how option? Many scholars? Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it's probably district wide about 25. Um, one thing you said I caught at the end, um, so if we're approving Fort Smith yes, for five years, um, the 22-23 school year would be kind of your planning year, get everything together. Correct. 23-24, you will open to which grades? 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 7 through 11, and will your cap be 500 for that level? No, it'll be 350. 350. And then in 24, 25, you'll expand to 12, 7 through 12? Yes, ma'am, and have 500 scholars, hopefully. And then that will be what it is going forward? Yes, that's correct. Okay. It'll be important that we enter that into LEA Insights when you're requesting an LEA number for Fort Smith? Yes, ma'am. That we're getting all of that clean from the front? Thank you. Um, and all of these will be... Um, listed as schools underneath um, Hoss Hall Academies. That's right? correct, yes, ma'am. Okay. Those are all of my questions. Anyone have any more? All right. Um, I'll accept a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the application as presented. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Baldwin and a second by Ms. Newton to approve the Haas Hall Academy five-year renewal of all 
um, current charters and the addition of the 712 in Fort Smith with, find my notes, um, with that school to open 23-24 right. with 350 students in grades 7 through 11 and then to expand in 24-25 to 712 with 500 students there on. That's correct. And that in essence raises your enrollment cap for the network of yes, Hoss Hall Academy. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? motion passes well, thank you so much um if you will ask mr henry to work with miss james and i think we're going to need a very clean waiver request yes, to send to the state board so we'll need to get that timely okay. um so that hopefully their review will go smoothly thank you and we're so sorry to hear about your mother well, i appreciate that very much ma'am thank, thank you. you very much if you'll wait just a moment we'll do our voting sheets Could I instead put a comment in the um, chat box? Yes. Um, yeah, because I'm having problem. I've had to change. Uh, yes, if you'll, if you'll put it in the comment section, Dr. Sutherland, and we'll grab it and put it in your voting sheet. Okay, okay great. Dr. Flowers. Vote to approve the five-year charter renewal of current locations and campus addition in Fort Smith for House Hall Academy with waivers as discussed. I'm excited about the advanced educational opportunities, especially the potential added interest in medicine as you continue to produce college and career-ready scholars. Ms. Saraceni. I support the House Hall Academy. You're off. You're on? Okay. Not giving much sound. Probably not close enough. Mm -hmm. I support the Haas Hall Academy renewal in addition of the Fort Smith campus. Excited to see the opportunities that will be afforded to students in the Fort Smith area beginning in the 23-24 school year. Thank you. Mr. Baldwin. Hall clearly has an outstanding program, a uh, great benefit to students that participate in your program. And I'm uh, real excited about the expansion of Fort Smith and the tie-in with the medical profession. Thank you. Ms. Newton. Okay. Haas Hall has a comprehensive plan to continue college ready, uh, readiness preparation for students. And Dr. Rob McMurray. The renewal application for Haas Hall in addition of the Fort Smith campus. They have demonstrated hot, <clears throat> strong, excuse me, strong outcomes on prior campuses. I anticipate they will continue the success at their new site. Thank you. Congratulations. Well, thank you so much. Um, we'll, we'll get together and get this waiver list, yes, and, and then um, the State Board will review it in March. Thank you so much. You thank you. Do y'all need a quick five minute before we start the last one? Okay, we're going to take a five minute break and then um, we will hear from our next item.
Thank you, everyone. Dr. Sutherland, uh, number four, please. Matthew Sutherland, coordinator for standards and system support, interim charter director. Um, the next item is actually an item that was tabled at the CAP meeting on 11822. It is uh, it is for the the amendment is actually for a uh, new location in Fort Smith. All right. Um, Ms. Saracini? I would like to make a motion to untable this action item. I move to remove action agenda item number four from the table and consider Premier Fort Smith's request to amend its charter application in regard to the location. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion from Ms. Saracini and a second from Dr. Rotman Murray to remove this action item from the table for consideration. And um, we received a letter, I think, that's cleared it up. Mm -hmm. All right, any discussion, question? I just want to say thank you. And everybody else will thank you too that is going to need the same letter in the future. Mm -hmm. All right, um, any other discussion? Then do we have a motion to, Ms. James, are we, we need to kind of come back and, yeah, we need to kind of come back and have a discussion. What's, what's our next step? What do we need to do now? Um, well, we've received the letter from the, um, the alcohol board confirming that the statute that we were concerned about only applies to liquor sales and it's my understanding that the Dollar General um, does not sell liquor so there shouldn't be any issues with them uh, keeping their permit but we need that we needed that confirmation and we were asking for that confirmation from the alcohol board which we have since uh, received so now that the item is no longer tabled um, if the panel would like to uh, move to approve the amendment request regarding the location um, we can we can do that or if there's another motion that the panel would like to make that's fine as well questions comments motion I move to approve premier Fort Smith's request to amend its charter application in regard to location a second I have a motion from Ms. Saracini and a second from Dr. Wright McMurray to approve the amendment for the um, Fort Smith location. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Amendment is approved. Um, do we need to make a voting sheet or? Or is that just clean up? Um, no, ma'am. I, I don't believe so. The charter was already approved. This was just a matter of um, amending the charter because the location will be within a thousand feet of alcohol sales. So and now we have clarification of what all that means. Yes, we do. And so I think I think that we're good. We're good to move forward now. All right. Action item number five, please. All right, Premier Little, Little Rock Amendment Request. The, char the charter is requesting to merge Premier High School Fort Smith Charter with Premier High School Little Rock Charter, add two satellite campuses, one in Jonesboro, Arkansas, and one in Texarkana, Arkansas, uh, Texarkana, Arkansas to the charter license, increase the enrollment cap to 600 for the Premier High School Little Rock Charter to reflect the, the merger of the two charters and the additional campuses. Now. Last night, I received an email that actually alters this amendment request. Um, I believe I, I sent that to all of you, so you should have that communication. But the amendment request now reads, to increase the enrollment cap to 600, to create a new district, Premier High Schools of Arkansas, to merge charters under the new district of Premier High School Little Rock and Premier High School Fort Smith, and to add an expansion campus in Texarkana. So Jonesboro has been taken out of out of the actual amendment request. Okay. Um, Ms. James, I'm assuming we'll follow the same 20 minute. Yes, ma'am, that is correct. Just any 
someone who is going to speak on behalf of the school should be sworn in. Okay. All right. If you are speaking on behalf of Premier in general, uh, if you will stand and raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Um, be sure that if you're coming to the microphone that you're speaking clearly into the microphone, stating your name and title for the record. And Mr. Felton, you have 20 minutes. Oh, you have a presentation, Dan. Uh, good morning. My name is Dennis Feltz and I serve as the State Director of Premier High Schools of Arkansas. I want to spend some time uh, introducing my team that I have with me, uh, some are virtual and on site. Uh, I have Mr. James Taylor, who's our Chief Financial Officer for Responsive Education Solutions. I have Mr. Anthony Edwards, who's our Executive Vice President of School Expansion and Innovation. I have Kent Brown, who's our Vice President of Real Estate and Construction. I have Ms. Rhonda Bradford, who's our RES Arkansas Superintendent. I have Ms. Katie Stevens, who is our Arkansas Director of Finance. I have Mr. Curtis Shack, who's our Executive Director of Data and Systems Management. I have Mr. Aaron Duval, who's our Arkansas CT Director. I have Ms. Marla Pearson, who is our RES Arkansas Special Programs Director. And also have Ms. Bria House McCartney, who's actually a campus director at our Premier High School Texas County on the Texas side. So why are we here today? Uh, we are seeking to offer a license through our Premier High School Little Rock Charter by converting it, the district into Premier High Schools of Arkansas. Under the Premier High Schools of Arkansas district, we will have our Little Rock campus and our Fort Smith campus. And then we're seeking to add additional location in Texarkana. And then with the merger of the campuses and with the expansion of campus to increase the enrollment cap to 600 students. So giving you a little background on Responsive Education Solutions, we were founded in 1999. We operate more than 90 schools across the country, across six different school brands. We have had, to date, over 22,000 graduates. Currently, we serve over 22,000 students, and we employ over 2,400 individuals. Talking about Premier High School's impact in Arkansas, we opened Little Rock in 2013. We opened North Little Rock in 2019. We opened Springdale in 2021. Currently, we are serving over 350 high school students across the state of Arkansas. So look at some of the numbers. Since 2013, we've awarded 144 Arkansas high school diplomas. We've had 71 of those students have previously dropped out or been retained in high school. 17 of those students have opportunity to graduate early. 15 of those students were actually parents while they were graduating. We've also had opportunity for students to earn up to 43 college hours through our concurrent credit program. And then 85 of those students have either enrolled in a college military or post-secondary institution. One of the unique things about Premier High School is we try to connect with students. We know that some of our students have talents as well as in the classroom and interests outside the classroom. So that comes through student organizations, extracurricular activities, as well as another key component is our college and career readiness. We want to make sure we're getting students on college campuses. We want students to be able to see what it looks like to be on a college campus and to be able to get the technical assistance needed in order to fill out things like FAFSA and college applications. Also, we want to make sure each student has an advisory period where students are engaged and dialogue about their personalized plan. What are their strengths and weaknesses? What are things they have towards a graduation diploma? What are things that they need to complete those requirements? What are the things they want to do after high school, which is driven through that post-secondary plan? And then how do we start setting goals in high school and start preparing to meet those post-secondary goals? Parents in the community is really big in our premier high schools. We have opportunities where parents can volunteer as well as we want parents to have voices through things like our Parent Teacher Association as well as serving on committees to be involved in school decision making. And as well as working with our community partners 
to make sure that we're providing wraparound services for our students as well as tapping into those resources in the community that are also helping the same unique population that we serve. One of the things we've tried to do over the past years is collaborate with other high schools, collaborate with higher ed institutions. And so we've collaborated with other charter schools or traditional schools through professional development. We've, pa we've partnered with other districts to offer students additional career pathways. And we've also partnered with higher institutions to provide students with concurrent credit opportunities for those that, that's eligible, and as well as additional uh, industry-based pathways to earn the industry-based certifications. Some of the awards and recognition amongst Premier High Schools, just recently, Premier High School of North Little Rock was recognized by the Office of Education Policy as beating the odds in their literacy growth located in the central region of Arkansas and as a high school in the state of Arkansas. Uh, we also opened that campus in its inaugural year with 115 students, graduating 15 students, and 50, almost 50% 50 of those students had previously dropped out of high school. We've been recognized by people like the secretary and the governor for our participation in the professional learning community project. We've also had educators that have been recognized for the work they're doing in the school, as well as we've also been recognized by the Arkansas Charter School Office as one of the best practices in personalized learning. Currently, we are located in Little Rock, North Little Rock, Springdale, and Fort Smith this upcoming school year. Our proposed new location is Texarkana. With our new organization structure, we will have our premier high schools of Little Rock, I mean premier high schools of Arkansas. And under premier high schools of Arkansas, you see our three, three premier high schools we will have. Little Rock, Fort Smith, and Texarkana. So in Texarkana, we are seeking to provide an alternate academic program to the community that emphasizes and focuses on this unique group. Also, we're trying to decrease the dropout rate in the community and increase the graduation rate amongst the educational disadvantaged students. This is driven through local support, community support, as well as our mission and vision to replicate one of the best practices that have been identified by the state in personalized learning across the state to increase our capacity and impact on other high school students. Why Texarkana? In the 2020-2021 school year, 34% of the seniors that were anticipated to graduate in Texarkana did not graduate during this academic year. 66% of students that withdrew from the Texarkana Arkansas School District decided to enroll in another school or a school out of state. Currently, we serve over 140 students in our premier high school in Texarkana on the Texas side. We have families and, and students in the community who are seeking guardians on the Texas side to engage in this education entity. In Texarkana, we will continue to provide our mission by providing hope to students through a caring master-based learning environment where we're promoting a free society and cultivating moral and academic excellence. So who will we serve in Texarkana? Students who are seeking a smaller, personalized learning environment, the disengaged student, the student who's employed full time, the student who's at risk of dropping out of high school or who has dropped out of high school. These same students are dealing with attendance and truancy issues in a traditional school. We continue to expand on our academic model by offering a personalized learning model to students where students engage in goal setting, students engage in mastery based learning, students engage in advisory, Students are assigned personalized coaches and exposed to high quality instruction. We want to continue to offer a myriad of instructional strategies to meet individual students' needs. It may come through direct instruction, independent instruction, accelerated instruction, and connected instruction. We want to continue to support our school leadership as well as the teachers and staff we have employed in the school. That comes through job embedded coaching. We want to make sure that our teachers are getting instructional feedback. We want to make sure that our novice teachers are getting the appropriate mentoring guidance. We want to make sure our staff is engaged in professional growth plans. 
and they have opportunities to attend national, state, and local conferences, as well as the district team and the national team you heard me talk about, provide adequate support from the district level and the national level, and as well as continue to operate as a professional learning community where all individuals in the school are working towards mutual goals, and there's mutual accountability towards those goals that we're working towards. So talking about a day in the life of a Premier High School Texarkana student or Premier High School student. Students are engaged in advisory, where they're checking in with their advisory and setting their goals and looking at their progress. Students are also engaged in small group instruction, one-on-one -on -one tutorial, whole group tutorial, project-based learning. Also, some students are engaged in career pathways. So our, our juniors and seniors that are only need a few credits to graduate. We want them going to school for half a day. We want them to immediately start working towards those post-secondary goals. That way when they leave high school, they have a high school diploma and a certification ready to enter the workforce. We want to continue to provide support to our college career coaches, our personalized, our personalized learning coaches, our graduation advisor committee, our attendance recovery program, as well as our dropout recovery program. We want to continue to have adequate communication to all stakeholders using platforms that we use, such as Parent Square, or having engagement events such as Literacy Night, College Night, Math Night, and also having accessibility to school leadership. We want parents to feel we have an open door. You have concerns or feedback about the way we're operating the school or the decisions that we're making. We want to make sure that we have opportunities where they can have a platform to be able to express those. Another key feature of the school is we care about the morals and values of our students as well. We want to produce good citizens in Arkansas, as well as high school graduates. So we get students engaged in programs like Pizza with a Professional, which we're inviting community members into the school to engage in conversation with our students about the things it takes to accomplish to get into their career, their pathways, the perseverance, the resilience that it took to be able to accomplish their goals. We want to continue to promote as much as we can student life and getting students involved in the community, getting students involved in extracurricular activities, and as well as recognizing the small wins. We've learned with our premier high schools that it's very important with our population that we serve to make sure that we're taking advantage of the small wins and constantly reminding students of the things that are important and recognizing their success for them and their families. We want to continue to offer students CT certifications. So we plan to partner uh, with the University of Arkansas Hope and Texarkana. We want to equip the school with mobile science labs. We want to make sure that students can get opportunities to engage in things like welding, medical professions, diesel technology, and then also a chance to get certifications like your OSHA 10, your pharmacy tech, your forklift operator certifications to be able to have them better equipped to enter the workforce. I previously talked about our partnership. We're very excited about the partnership we're going to have with University of Arkansas Hope at Texarkana. They're offering several one-year industry-based pathways in which our students will be able to actively engage in every day on their campus. So why CTE industry-based certifications? As we talk to community members, as we talk to business leaders, as we talk to employers, we're finding out there is a strain and a demand in some of these fields and a lack of qualified individuals. As you can see the numbers in this presentation, that we have opportunities for students to earn a certification and enter workforce making a decent living. We're not here to argue that college is not for everyone. We just know, based on historical data, everybody's not going to college. So we want to make sure that we're providing alternate options for our students as well in the event that they don't want to go directly into college after high school. We even see it supported by research, even in Arkansas. Students who complete a CTE program were 24, 21 percentage points more likely to graduate high school than their peers. So it goes hand in hand with our efforts for dropout recovery. So looking at our potential partnership, we're seeking to partner with the local high schools to try to identify this group that's fallen through the cracks, to identify these students that are walking the streets of Texarkana. 
We've been meeting with the Juvenile Justice Probation Officer, the Juvenile Detention Center, to talk about some of these issues and the trends they're seeing in the community in Texarkana and how we can work together to address those. Partners, we're looking into partnering with the Texarkana School District. We're looking into partnering with the local education co-ops to provide resources and professional development, as well as those youth intervention programs and agencies that's in the community targeting this unique group already. As we spent time in the community, I've shared with you all as well today, some letters of support from various members of the community that represent higher ed institutions, that represent parents, that represent community leaders, as well as business leaders in the community. Most importantly, we like to think when it comes to Premier High Schools, a lot of times we are the voice of the unheard, the unspoken. And we want to be an advocacy for parents and community members that are looking for a choice. From the federal and state support, Responsive Education Solutions has received over $3 million to expand these Premier High Schools in Arkansas in Opportunity Zone. RES Arkansas has received over $2 million in state CSP funds to open Premier High Schools across Arkansas. First year in Arkansas, we graduated 10 high school students. Last year, we awarded more than 40 high school diplomas from students who otherwise wouldn't have a high school diploma. And to date, we've awarded more than 140 high school diplomas to Arkansas high school students. Once again, we are here today asking to convert the district to prevent high schools of Arkansas to merge Little Rock and Fort Smith under that district to expand to Texarkana this upcoming school year and to increase our enrollment cap to reflect those mergers and expansion to 600. At Premier High School, we'll continue to keep students in the center and the priority of everything we're doing. And we continue to be responsive to the needs of the communities in Arkansas. Can we go back, can you back that up to the slide that has the amendment? So I wanna make sure that I know what we're asking for today, okay? okay? I just wanna be clear. So the first thing we're asking is to name this network of all five schools, the premier high schools of Arkansas, is that correct? No, right now I'm trying to just put Little Rock and Fort Smith in Texarkana, so it'll be three. So Little Rock, Fort Smith, and Texarkana. That you is wanna correct. put those three under Premier High Schools of Arkansas, and you're going to keep North Little Rock as a separate charter and Springdale as a separate charter. That is correct. And someday you may want to merge those into Premier High Schools of Arkansas. That is correct. Okay, so on that second one where it says merge charters, in reality, you're placing those charters under one charter, one network charter of Premier High Schools of Arkansas. That is correct. Even though they'll all have their own LEA number. That is correct. Okay, and then, and then the cap, so well, let me ask another question. So you would open Fort Smith August 22nd? That is correct. 2022. You would open Texarkana August 22nd, 2022. That is correct. Okay. And what is the cap of the Little Rock campus? The current cap is 250. And what is the cap for Fort Smith? 300. And so what what are you requesting then for Texarkana? It will be encompassing that 600. No, I need a number. Because if you're gonna offer a lottery, you have to have a lottery for the number of positions at that school. So you're at, there's 250 in Little Rock, 300 seats in Fort Smith. How many seats are you gonna have available at Texarkana? 
75. So that 625 would be the total cap for Premier High Schools of Arkansas? That is correct. Okay. And then are you requesting that the waivers that you have for Little Rock, Fort Smith, and Texarkana be exactly the same? For that is correct. Campuses. I'm seeking the, the same waivers that I have for Premier High School of Little Rock. So the ones, the current waivers that you have for Little Rock would be the waivers that would apply to all the schools under Premier High Schools of Arkansas. That is correct. So, Ms. James? So the Little Rock campus is set to expire of 6:30-23. Yes, ma'am. And if we approve all of this, would that then make all of those schools fall under a, a new five-year timeline? because I would assume that Fort Smith, when we gave them a new charter independently, that would have given them a five year, right? right? So it would make sense then, and you would give that to Texarkana, and if you're going to put it all, package it all under Premier High Schools of Arkansas, that the Little Rock would extend to be in alignment. Trip, am I right? Little Rock expires uh, 23, 2023. So okay. they would be coming up for renewal very soon. Right. So in this package, it just kind of shifts them all over and packages them all together. And I think we'll have to come back and look at all the waivers and make sure that, um, I mean, since Little Rock was approved, there have been legislative meetings, there's new standards, there's new rules, there's a lot of those things that we'll need to come back and just review again very carefully. Tell us about your location for Texarkana. So we found a location, I think it's listing your packet as well, 32, uh, 3216 State Line Avenue. Um, we feel like the location meets our checklist as far as making sure students are safe, making sure the uh, location is accessible, uh, making sure it's within our budget as well, and an opportunity to be located where we anticipate our uh, targeted population to be able to receive the education option. And residents, Texas residents will not be attending this school? That is correct because there's another one a few feet away on the other side of the line. That is correct. Arkansas right. is pretty pumped about it as I've talked to the community. Dr. Wright McMurray, do you have additional questions? Um, not right now, I don't have any questions, but I do have some comments. Yes. Um, I do appreciate you guys working to make those connections between um, UACC Hope um, Texarkana and providing those opportunities for students to make those connections um, and then also I noticed that you guys are focusing on one of your certifications being the work keys assessment um, so I guess that is a little bit of a question is that done through the workforce services centers or how is that done for your students that are on the premier campus that are taking the work keys assessment sitting for the career readiness certification as far as the work keys goes on campus, but the ones I'm primarily talking about were the ones offered through the higher ed institutions. So they kind of facilitate the testing and, and all those things. And, and one of the things that me and Mr. Duvall um, try to do is when we engage in these conversations, we care about quality as well. 
I mean, we care about, we want to hear about, you know, you have X amount of students enrolled in these programs, but what is your actually passing rate of, of students? And so we're trying to make sure we're partnering with institutions to have high completion rates because we don't want students just necessarily doing the pathway. We really want them to pass the assessment to get that proficiency. Ms. Newton, do you have questions or comments? No. Mr. Baldwin? It's just one. I'm, I'm curious about the plan to merge Little Rock uh, and Fort Smith and Texarkana and then not to merge um, Springdale and North Little Rock. So just explain okay. your thoughts. So on Springdale and North Little Rock, um, I wrote uh, open enrollment application for those schools at the same time, I actually wrote a CSP grant application. Uh, in my application to the CSP office, I did indicate I would open these campuses up separately as separate open enrollment charters. And so to make sure I'm staying within the rules of the CSP and I'm upholding my promise to the, to the office and the grantee, then until those grants expire, I will not consolidate them. But that's the only reason why. Dr. Flowers. Those are comments. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. All right, Mr. Felton. Um, this amendment request does not include a digital learning plan that would extend for the full amount of time to meet these three schools. So um, I think to have a clean pathway, um, you'll need to have a, we'll need to do a digital learning plan and bring it through the process okay. and that way there will be no de, no confusions. Also in standards for accreditation, you're flagging for business manager. And so um, we were wondering about why that you have a business manager. Is the business manager um, a hiree of the CMO or because they're not showing up in e-school as a business manager? I understand that is correct, and I think it's mainly because the business managers not directly work with one school. Right, but they're not entered into e-school or into e-finance as the business manager. So, because I think they're probably an employee of the CMO. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. So, you need a waiver of... I didn't write down the rule. The standard... Three dash A dot five. Each public school district shall employ a general business manager responsible for the fiscal operations of the school district. So you don't have one in e finance, so it's flagging. So you actually, Miss James, am I correct? He needs this waiver because that person is employed by the CMO. Yes, ma'am, that is correct. So hang on, Miss James. So today if we were to um, approve that and say that's okay for um, premier high schools of Arkansas to cover Little Rock, Port Smith, and Texarkana, yes, can he also make that request today for North Little Rock and Springdale? Since that was not added to the agenda, I'm afraid that, I'm afraid that we can't do that today. But if you wanted to add the waiver request, as an amendment for the other two campuses? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. So, Mr. Walter, do you have common comments? Uh, yes, brief one. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the panel, Trip Walter, staff attorney, APSRC. I guess the only thing I wanted to make sure on of rather is the business is, I know there was a new uh, change made to the law this year, uh, effective this year as a business business manager so I don't know how that impacts standards if there would need to be a waiver I mean now it doesn't have to be an employee of the school uh, I don't know how that impacts the the uh, the entering of that so to speak I wouldn't think that would be a problem now from that end usually in standards if we have on record that it's a part of the CMO and there's a CMO contract or something. People want to enter just a statement. Hey, Joe's my 
business manager, and that's not documentation. So we just need to make sure that there's either a waiver or thorough documentation to be able to um, have something that meets the law on that standard. Okay. So do you want us to table, do you want us to just wait on that and come back when he comes back with everything else and do it at that time? Well, I, I guess what I'm saying is I don't, I mean, I'm assuming you have the documentation from the Stevens and everything that could be provided. Yeah. I mean, okay. But, yeah. And I think that might be the easier, perhaps, way to handle it. Okay. Because they're, they're, I, I, and I guess I'm, I'm thinking too, it may not be specifically relevant for this, but I can't think it kind of threads the needle with the new law that they're in compliance with that. Well, if we're putting it all together under Premier High Schools of Arkansas, we just want to make sure they've got the district things put together as well. Yes, ma'am. Okay, you. so we have Premier High School of Arkansas as the overarching LEA and then three schools underneath with the LEA, Little Rock, Fort Smith, Texarkana, 250 students cap at Little Rock, 300 at Fort Smith, 75 at Texarkana for a cap of 625 students with the same waivers at each school under that umbrella of Premier High Schools of Arkansas and the same this approval would give a five-year extension, so that's this is 22, that would be 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Is that correct? Okay. Now we've got the facts. Dr. Flowers, do you have any additional questions? Mr. Baldwin. Dr. Wright McMurray? No. Ms. Newton? No. All right. I'll accept a motion. I move approval of the amendment request for Richard. Get a little closer to the microphone, Sorry. please. I move approval of the amendment request. I'll second. second. All right. I have a motion by Dr. Wright McMurray and a second by Mr. Baldwin to approve the amendment request as discussed and summarized. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Um, so our panel members will put their notes in um, the voting sheet and we will come back with a clean waiver sheet to make sure that's what you agree to and uh, clean sheet with the names, titles, and caps of each school. Just so far, our records were clear what Thank we've got. And then, um, don't forget, you'll come back with a digital learning plan if you plan to continue that. I will. Mr. Baldwin? Yes, I support the application and vote in favor of it as presented with the, I guess, the change in the voting cap on students, 625. Dr. Flowers? Vote to approve the merger of Premier High School for Smith Charter and Premier High School Little Rock Charter, the addition of a satellite campus in Texarkana and to increase the enrollment cap to 625. I look forward to hearing about your continued efforts to support the needs of students that may be educationally disengaged in that region of our state. Dr. Wright McMurray. Okay. Um, I voted for the amendment and I support the amendment request. I'm excited about the opportunities for students to complete their education and pursue CT programs to study at UACC Hope Tech Arkansas. Ms. Newton. I voted in favor of the uh, motion. The need for this focus of charter has been demonstrated in example by the success of others. Congratulations. Thank y'all. Um, and as I said, we'll get 
those documents cleaned up, let you review before we put them on the state board agenda for March okay. to make sure we're accurate and clean. Sounds good. Panel members, do we have any other business? Then I'll accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Dr. Wright McMurray to adjourn and a second by Mr. Baldwin. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. All right, meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone.